In this video, you're going to learn the basics of game market research in less than 15 minutes. So you avoid making a game that's a financial failure. So I'm about to teach you a simple technique that will show you how much potential income your next game project can possibly make. You'll also get a step-by-step -step action plan that will help you decide if it's worth spending the next six months or more on your next game project. And you'll learn how to identify hidden opportunities so that way you're not competing in an oversaturated marketplace. Also, I've included a link to download the blueprint for this teaching. So it's basically a PDF that will show you in a single page exactly what you're going to do here. So that way you can use this as a reference later on. Best of all, the technique I'm about to show you is very simple, but it's very effective. And it only will take about 15 minutes to learn. But on the flip side, if you don't learn the basics of game market research, you might waste your time making a game that, you know, players might not buy. So don't hope that, you know, your game will launch successfully. Do the research now, do the work now in pre-production to make sure that your game will be successful at launch. So let's get to it. And here's how it works. So the first question I want to ask is how does market research really help you make a successful game? So here's the first insight I want you to know, and that is there's no amount of marketing or PR or branding, or even if you got, you know, some acclaim or if your game won awards, if you get these two parts wrong, or if you miss the mark on these. So number one is producing a high quality game. And number two is getting your genre right. So let me explain what I'm talking about here. And that is basically if you get your genre wrong, and if you have a low quality game, then nothing will help you. So for example, and maybe you've experienced this too with your last commercial game, you did everything that, you know, they told you to do, right? You've posted on social media, you went on Twitter, you went on YouTube, you've contacted uh, streamers and YouTubers, you went try to get some PR, you put out a devlog, you post it almost every day, and maybe you got some acclaim, maybe even won some awards. But no matter how much marketing efforts you put into it, no matter how much you know energy and time and money you put into your marketing, your game still wasn't a success at launch. And the two reasons for that is, is either your game wasn't high quality, which probably was, or your genre was wrong. So if you get those two wrong, then nothing you do from here will help. So what does happen when you get the genre right or you produce a high quality game? Let me explain that next. Well, if you get the genre right, then you won't have to do any marketing at all. Basically, your marketing will be baked in into the game and you won't have to try to convince players to play your game. And the thinking is that if you make a game that's very marketable, then the players will be coming to you, right? Also, by researching your genre and getting a deep understanding of what your players want and don't want in your genre, then using that feedback will help you make a game that players will want to buy. So how do you do this? How do you test your idea? How do you see how much potential income your game might make? How do you know your game will resonate or strike a chord with players? And how do you get feedback from players in a way to help you, you know, make a higher quality game? Well, let me show you how to do that next. So let's get into what are the basics of game market research and how does it work? So I call this system the game demand basics. It's basically three techniques and three action plans that you need to take. And after doing the techniques and the three action steps, You'll know how much potential income your game might make and you'll decide if it's worth spending the next six months or more on this game project. So here's exactly what to do. And technique number one is pick the right genre. The most important marketing decision you'll do is right now, and that is picking your genre. So to do this right, you need to be very specific. So for example, say I say platformer, right? So what kind of platformer? Is it like an endless runner, like, you know, the Sonic games? Is it like a precision platformer, like Super Meat Boy? Or is it like a puzzle platformer, kind of like Fez? So the reason why it's very important to get specific is because your players, your gamers, have a very well-defined idea of what a genre is. So let me give you an example uh, for food, right? Say I come up to you and say, do you want some food? You know, you're hungry, but that's not specific enough. So I think maybe you like pizza. Everyone likes pizza, right? But again, you need to get more specific because there's people that are vegans or people that like the all meat, you know, pizzas, right? You got to be very specific. So the reason why you really want to drill down and get specific is because that's how you get attention. Like I said, if I just say food, mm, yummy food, right? You're not going to, it's not going to grab your attention. And even if I just say pizza, come get it, right? You, you know, you're, you're going to be thinking, what kind of pizza? If I say the wrong type of pizza, you know, I, have, I lost your attention. But if I say the right pizza, then I grabbed your attention. So this is why it's very important to get very specific. It's the same with your game, right? So if you're having a plat, if you're making a platformer, what kind of platformer? Saying platformer is kind of like saying, you know, hot food, come and get it, right? It's too, too generic, too abstract. You're not going to get attention by just saying platformer. So technique number one is to pick your genre, but you have to do it in a way that you have to be very specific and drill down exactly what your, your subgenre is. 
So we'll put a pin on that because we're gonna use technique number one later. So let's move on to number, or technique number two. And technique number two is how big is your market or basically how big is your genre? So the idea here is that, is it worth it spending you know six months or more in a genre or in a market that is oversaturated and the demand is pretty low, right? Is that worth it to you? I mean, if it's a passion project, then you don't care about this stuff, right? You're gonna make a game that you wanna make and if players like it, good, right? If not, then you, you know you did something that you always wanted to do. But if you're doing game dev in a way where you want to make some income, some profit, so that way you can take that profit and you know use it to make your next game to help you grow your game studio, you have to be a little bit more sophisticated and less casual about it, right? So this is why it's important to find out how big your genre is or your market is. So how do you do this? How do you find out how big your genre or your market is? So there's a simple tool called Games dash stats.com and I'll have a link for you in the description below for how to get to that the website but basically here's how it works so you'll basically search for your subgenre remember in technique number one where you got you drilled down and got specific so you're going to search for a specific genre then in the first column you'll see games count so basically this is how many games have been released in that subgenre and then you'll kind of hop over to column number four which is medium income or income medium. So I think what they do to get that medium income is basically look at the game reviews and multiplied it by the, the cost of the game. So it kind of gives you a basic idea. I mean, so for example, if like in my platformer example, I would look for puzzle platformer because I would drill down and get specific. And then the income medium or medium income for that is about $490, right? So basically if I, if I was in the middle of the pack, I would expect to make $490. So again, the number's not that accurate, but it gives you a great idea, of basically a ballpark figure on, on how much you'll make. And I'm not saying that your game will be in the middle of the pack. Maybe you're gonna make a hollow night, right? And you're above the pack and you can make way more than that. But odds are, and for my example, there's over 4,000 games that have been released that I'm not gonna be in the high tier, you know, I'm not gonna be making a lot of money is because there's so much competition. The, the genre is so saturated that I probably will be probably below the 490. So is it worth it for me to spend next the next six months on, you know, making a game in the puzzle platform genre? I mean, if I had a million bucks and I spent all of it on marketing, maybe, but just because I have a million dollars on marketing doesn't guarantee my game will be a success, right? So this is why it's very important to pick the right genre because even if you had a lot of money for marketing, it won't guarantee you a lot of success if the market is oversaturated and there's no demand in it. Anyway, my whole point in this technique is that in less than five minutes, I have a good idea if it's worth, you know, putting in six months or more in this genre or not. And it's better to make this mistake now than it is in saying like six months when you've got a team together, when you've got some art done, when you got some coding done, you know, there's a lot of time, energy and money already put into it. It's better to make the mistake now when you none of that is invested into, you know, your game yet than in, when you were like six months into it. Because after six months, when you're in production, making this mistake will cost you even more time, energy, and money. And then in my case, say I find out that there's a, you know, there's very low demand and it, the market is oversaturated, will make me wanna, you know, probably include a new feature. So that way I can help, you know, get my game look a little bit different or differentiate my game from the competition. That means I have to backtrack and add new features. And this is gonna lead into features creep, right? You know, just the scope will get bigger and bigger. And now my six month project is three years of dev hell, right? So it's better to make this mistake now in pre-production than it is, you know, later on in production. So then you might be asking, well, what's the point of all this, right? You, you know, if you look at almost all of the genres, they're, they're all oversaturated and, you know, the medium income is pretty low. Well, let me get into technique number three, and that is your market is oversaturated. Now what? So using, you know, this tool is great looking at data, looking at stats is amazing at finding out what's happening now and in the past, right? But it's really hard to forecast. It's really hard to predict demand in the future. Even if you have all this data, all this, all these stats, all this information, it's still really hard to forecast demand in the future. And don't get me wrong, there's some games that, you know, break all the rules that go into oversaturated market, have low, where there's low income or low potential income and there's low demand and they do some funky features and you know they add a cool story or weird graphics or they're even pixel art and it blows up right like i said it breaks all the rules all the stuff that you've been learning about marketing you know but there's one game that will come out and be a huge success to, despite all that but the idea here isn't to hope that this will happen to your game right you just you know dive into a, a genre that's oversaturated and maybe you have a unique feature or something different and your game blows up 
The idea isn't to hope that will happen. The idea here is to deliberately try to figure this out. So the solution here is to get even more specific. So remember technique number one, how I told you to drill down and try to find a specific subgenre. So the way to figure this out where you are in an oversaturated marketplace where the demand is low, the solution is to get even more specific. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So for example, I'm making a precision platformer, right? I know that I have a small chance of success because the, again, the game or the genre is oversaturated and the medium income is low and there's low demand in that genre. But if I drill down and get even more specific, I might have a chance. So let me show you what I did. So going through the game stats website, I noticed another little subgenre called motorbike and it had 178 you know, games that were developed, but the medium income was over, I think at the time was 9,000 or 10,000 when I, when I was look, doing my research. This means that this small little genre, the motorbike subgenre has under 200 games, but the medium is high, which just tells me that there's a lot of demand for this. There's a lot of motocross or, you know, a lot of bikers that want more biking games, right? Or motorbike games, right? So what I came up with was a motorbike precision platformer, right? That in my mind, that kind of makes sense. It, you know, that the motorbike subgenre complements the precision platformer genre, right? So do this right now. I have a step-by-step -step action plan. It's only three steps. It should take you about five to 10 minutes to do. And this will help you determine if it's worth spending, you know, a lot of time on your game idea. And you'll get some insights about how to find a hidden opportunity. So step one is to basically open a Google Sheets and you'll have three columns, right? So the first column, you put subgenre. And then the second column, you'll put game count. And then the third column, you'll put medium income. And then in step two is again, basically taking the subgenres, you know, in technique number one, where you found it, where you drill down and found at least three subgenres, take those and enter them in column number one or column A. And then step three is basically go to game-stats.com. And again, I'll show you the, I'll give you the link in the description, or it's probably up here on the screen too. Go there and then you'll search for your subgenre and you basically you'll plug in the game count and the medium income for each of the three or more of your subgenres that you picked. So doing this will give you a snapshot or like a bird's eye view of how big your potential market can be, right? So in my example, I have, you know, I pick uh, platformers and it looks like there's probably, you know, over 10,000 games, you know, combined with the three subgenres and each of the medium incomes is around, you know, $400. So pretty low. A medium income, but pretty high, you know, games, game counts, which means that there's this market is oversaturated with low demand, right? But like I said before, looking at stats and data is important, but it's not going to show you uh, what's going to happen in the future. It's going to kind of show you what's happening now, right? But there is a way to look at this data to help you find out a hidden opportunity to discover a new category, a new market, right? So this is step four, where you discover a new category that has high income potential. So in my example, I basically just went through the game stats website and I found the motorbike subgenre. What popped out to me was, you know, the low game counts and the high medium income. And also in my mind, like I said before, motorbike complements, you know, precision platformer. So in step four, what you're trying to do is trying to find another, another subgenre that will complement your main subgenre or your, your main three subgenres, but the complementary subgenre needs to have high medium income, but low game count. Okay. Say you went through all the three techniques and the three action steps. And plus you knew you did the, the fourth bonus action step, basically trying to uncover a new market. Say you did that all and you couldn't get it right. You still found a mark, you know, a, a market that's oversaturated, doesn't have a lot of income potential. And you couldn't find that, you know, that fourth subgenre that will complement your, your main subgenres, right? So what do you do? Well, if you want more in-depth and more advanced trainings to help you make a game that is marketable in a way where you do, you know, less marketing, then I highly recommend that you check out my Game That Sells Itself free workshop. The free workshop will give you exact blueprints for outlining, creating, and deliberately making a game in a way that will grab a player's attention and get them to buy it. And like I said, don't be like most game devs that hope that will, they'll make a game that will explode into the market and come out of nowhere. I mean, this isn't 2012 anymore where a game dev can work in isolation and then as long as they have a game that's innovative or different and that, that that's enough for to get attention and get, you know, to sell copies, right? I mean, the reason is because there's a gluttony of games out there right now. Players have so much choice and there's so much competition that being different or innovative isn't enough anymore, right? Because a lot of indie games do that. They are very different and they are very innovative, but it doesn't seem that's enough to grab attention anymore. So to be successful today, you can't be casual about, you know, game development. You can't be casual about product uh, planning and market research anymore. 
And you can't rely on just being different or innovative anymore because everyone's innovative and different. And that's not enough to grab attention anymore. So if you want to learn in-depth techniques and advanced trainings on how to make a game that, you know, players will buy, then click the link that says game that sells itself free workshop. All right. I'll talk to you soon with some more free tips on how to make a game that sells itself and help you grow your game studio. My name is Darius. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you later. Bye.